Welcome to the introduction of the New York State Computer Science and Digital Fluency Standards. This is just a quick overview of the five concept areas, the sub-concept areas, and some sample activities that you can do in any classroom. I'm Lori Guion, the coordinator for model schools at Washington, Saratoga, Warren, Hamilton, and Essex BOCES. I was on the original authoring committee for these standards, and I sit on a commissioner's advisory panel about the standards as well. My information is on the screen. Please reach out at any time with any questions or if you need any support. So the vision of these standards is that every student will know how to live productively and safely in the technology dominated world. This includes understanding the essential features of digital technologies, why and how they work and how to communicate and create using these technologies. So really what we're looking for is that the students are getting a, a first view or a, a, a overview of the computer science and digital fluencies ideas so that they can actually communicate and create within them. The link you see on your page will take you out to the state ed website that has a lot of great resources for you. It has the breakdown of the standards, some guidance documents, and some more information that I highly recommend you take a look at. So the five concept areas that are part of these standards are impacts of computing, computational thinking, networks and systems design, cybersecurity, and digital literacy. These concept areas can be done in any order. They do not need to be follow they do not need to follow a sequence other than by grade band. So when you're thinking about putting together a lesson, you may create a lesson that may touch on more than one concept area, uh, which will help make sure that these standards can be covered in the time you have in the classroom. As far as the rollout for these standards, we are now in the capacity building stage that started in July of 2022 and runs through August of 2023. The idea here is that we can focus on building our curriculum, getting our resources, and any professional learning that needs to be done. Here at our BOCES, we are always here and welcome, and welcome any uh, opportunity to help you build this capacity. Uh, we can offer that professional learning for you. Beyond August 2023, as we move into September of 2023, this should be our initial implementation where all credit-bearing computer science courses need to be aligned to these standards. And then for the rest of us, it will be continuing to build that capacity. In September 2024, full implementation in all grade bands K through 12 should be in place. So how are the standards organized? So I went over the uh, concept areas already, but each of them are broken down further into the sub-concept areas. And then each of them has a certain amount of standards. For impacts of computing, there are four sub-concept areas, seven standards. Computational thinking has four sub-concept areas with 10 standards, which is our largest area within the standards. Networks and systems design uh, is broken down into two sub-concept areas and has five standards. Cybersecurity is broken into three subconcept areas with five standards. And then finally, we have digital literacy, which is broken into two subconcepts with seven standards. Again, remember, you can do these, these standards in any order, and you can combine more than one standard into a lesson. The standards are broken down into grade bands, which you see at the top of your screen. On the top of the screen, you see that you have grades K1 as one grade band, grade two and three, four and six, seven, eight, and nine, 12. So as you're rolling these out into your classrooms and thinking about building your curriculum maps, you have the same standards within each of the grade bands. So K1 has the same set of standards, then two, three has the same standards and so on. These standards are then broken down further into grade identifiers or standard identifiers rather. So you have the grade band. Uh, this one happens to be impacts of computing. So you see the IC and then the standard number. Down the left hand side, you'll also see the subconcept areas. In this case, the subconcept is society. And then you will see the standard and underneath each standard, you will see a clarifying statement to help you further understand what the standard is looking for. I highly recommend that you download or print out a copy of the PDF from the state ed website to take a look at these standards for both your grade band, the grade bands below and the grade bands above. So you can kind of see that alignment. Let's break down impacts of computing. Impacts of computing is based on thinking about how using technology affects our local, 
national and global society. We have the subconcepts of society, ethics, accessibility, and career paths. Society and ethics are the larger portion of this, these, this group of standards. Accessibility and career paths have one standard each. The idea is to think about behaviors, cultural interactions, and social interactions. And we think about the, uh, the influence that computing has on these uh, on our different populations. Again, there are seven standards within each of these, uh, within this great band or within, I'm sorry, within this concept area. Um, there is also uh, on this page, a link to the activity books. You should find a copy of this presentation in the, uh, in the notes section underneath the YouTube link. Uh, and uh, you'll be able to take a look at those activity books. Within this realm of standards, within this concept area, the high impact vocabulary that we can see, um, we're talking about computing technologies, the world and global society, equity, access and influence. And then we're thinking about verbs that really do, if you put them onto blooms, build from the base level all the way up from identify to evaluate. Within impacts of computing, here are some suggested uh, activities. You can also find on the state ed website some activities that were put together by educators across the state. But you can uh, pause this video for a moment and read through this list. You also have a link to a Padlet. So if you'd like to share ideas or look at other ideas that other uh, educators across the state have thought of, you're welcome to take a look at that link. The next concept area is computational thinking. Computational thinking is built into four sub-concept areas, including modeling and simulation, data analysis and visualization, abstraction and decomposition, algorithms and programming. In this area, the main part of what needs to really be focused on is building that same vocabulary from K-12. So we're thinking about understanding what it is to make an algorithm, uh, to do simulations, to analyze data, think about problem solving and creating solutions. Computational thinking, again, has 10 standards. This is the largest area of our standards or of the concept areas. And again, the link to the activity books can be found on this page. The high impact vocabulary across the computational thinking standards, we're talking about patterns, data, algorithms, computational artifacts, I would add in there, even though it's not listed, sequencing. I think it's an important vocabulary word that we might want to take a look at um, as we're looking at those verbs when we're thinking about identifying, creating, decompose, evaluate, design. We should also think about sequencing in there as well. Within computational thinking, some ideas could be uh, different activities like tangrams, using coding, um, doing uh, different origami type of activities, graphing charts, uh, creating how-tos, anything that follows a pattern or there's a step-by-step -step guide is a great thing to do within computational thinking. Again, on this page, you'll find a link to a Padlet to where you can share your ideas and see ideas from others. The next area of, or the next concept area is networks and systems. This is broken down into two sub-concept areas, hardware and software, and networks and the internet. Here we're talking about data and thinking about the parts of a computer, how information goes in and how it comes out, understanding uh, hardware and software, including troubleshooting and understanding how they work, and then understanding the basic functions of a, of a computing system. So this is where you might have help desks, you might have a student in your room, their job to be your tech expert or tech expert, uh, to be able to start to think about how our systems work within our computational or within our computing structures. This is one of our smaller areas. There's only five standards that need to be covered within this area. The high impact nouns that we're thinking about, inputs and outputs, hardware and software, computer program, digital storage, solutions and strategies, network and the internet, rules and protocols, and even in emerging technologies. You'll note in the standards, it never actually lists what those emerging technologies are. The idea is that this is something that will build over time and maybe change. Right now in our current environment, we're looking at artificial intelligence, virtual, virtual reality, anything that, uh, that does machine learning or 
um, is autonomous. Those are items that we're really focusing on now with emerging technologies, but again, that can change. Our verbs go from identify to summarize and communicate and design. So we definitely want some hands-on activities when we're looking at these standards. Some examples of how you can use networks and systems design in the classroom could be labeling computer parts. You can try cryptography or do breakout EDU where you're doing different types of breakouts and they have to use different decoding type of activities like Morse code or um, explore the, the Navajo code talkers or something along those lines. This could also be creating technology handbooks. It could be student help desks. It could be designing uh, something within your innovations types of classes. Next, we have cybersecurity. This has five standards broken down into risks, safeguards, and response. It is a smaller category, but has some real high impact information that is really crucial for our students to understand. Cybersecurity and the next one, digital literacy, tie very nicely in with your impacts of computing. So here you can definitely overlap some of these standards within the rollout of uh, these standards into your classroom. Cybersecurity is broken into three subconcept areas again, risk, safeguard, and response. Here we're talking about your behavior, both online and, uh, and in physical ideas within the cybersecurity range. It's thinking about identifying your risks, making sure that you're safeguarding your information and responding to potential attacks. This ties really nicely into uh, New York's uh, Ed Law 2D law as far as thinking about how we can protect our personally identifiable information. Our nouns, uh, we're talking about private and public, we're talking about safeguards, uh, coding, uh, suspicion activities and breaches, and then again, your, nerve, your verbs start with identify and then really get up to that explain, describe, evaluate, and recommend. Some ideas of how to roll out cybersecurity into our classrooms. They could be specific discussions about personally identifiable information, practicing uh, phishing and clipbait um, type of activities, discuss uh, sharing passwords. It could be researching different types of code um, or codes in history. It could be hosting nights where you can talk about password safety. Uh, anything that you're doing that's going to talk about personal versus private information or thinking about how to protect ourselves online. Finally, we have digital literacy and digital literacy is broken down into digital use, which is going to be your keyboarding, learning how to use uh, technology or different uh, ed tech type of software. And then digital citizenship is how you protect yourself online. And it also is about who you are online. Digital literacy subconcepts of digital use and digital citizenship really do talk about leveraging that computer technology to access information, but also to create, share, and modify to be able to interact and collaborate and to understand both the benefits and the impl implications in our world. Our high impact nouns include keyboarding, digital artifacts, emerging technologies, digital citizenship, online behavior, and our verbs move from identify to evaluate and even manage. Some sample activities could be using the keyboard to do different types of presentations or practice or spelling. It could be collaborating in an online environment. It could be narrating a video or writing blogs, exploring privacy policies on the ed tech tools that we use. This could also be uh, where you wanna take it beyond the walls of our classroom and you do some global connections where you do different things with different classrooms or you bring in experts to talk with your students in a virtual environment. So that is the uh, the idea as far as these standards go. Those are the concept areas and the subconcept areas in a nutshell. Again, please reach out if you have any questions. I'm here to help you out and I'm here to support you in any way that you need.